it's easy to focus on what you can't do in winter. We want to talk about one of the things that you can do. We ordered some bare root fruit trees for our yard. We're going to talk about what bare root trees are, how to plant them and take care of them, and we'll show you how we did ours. When most homeowners get a new plant, they'll do so from a garden center or a big box store, and it will usually come in a pot. Occasionally, they'll get one with a wrapped root ball instead of a pot. In our case, we had very specific plants that we wanted, and we ordered them as bare root plants from a nursery. There are a number of advantages to bare root plants. We'll talk about those here. First, what is a bare root plant? A bare root plant simply doesn't have any soil attached to whatever root ball or root structure that it has. The immediate advantage of getting something as a bare root plant is that it saves on shipping because you don't have a ton of dirt being shipped in the root ball or in a pot. However, the long-term benefits far outweigh the shipping cost. Bare root plants are normally shipped at the end of winter or the beginning of spring. These plants are shipped in a dormant state where they've gone to sleep for the winter and are awaiting spring to wake up and start growing. As part of the process of preparing for the winter, most plants will shed as much water as they can, either concentrating it in the root ball or shedding it through their last remaining leaves or into the soil. By storing less water in the exposed parts of the plant, they are less at risk from damage of freezing. Plants that go through this transformation are prepared for one condition as they go dormant, but a totally different condition and environment as they wake up in the spring. Gardeners can leverage this natural tendency because when they change the environment by planting during that dormant period, the plant is automatically going to adapt to the new environment when it wakes up. Also, because it is preparing to grow for spring and put on a new flush of leaves and potentially grow fruit, it will be ready to send out new roots in order to find nutrients to support that growth. If we can give an environment where it can send those roots out quite far, that will help to stabilize the tree in the long run so that we don't have to worry about it pulling out of our loose miaca sand, and it will allow it to get nutrients and water from a wide area. Planting a bare root tree is very similar to a normal potted tree replanting, with a few minor exceptions. When digging a hole to plant a bare root tree, you will often want to build a mound in the center of the hole in order to drape the roots over the mound. The tree base itself will rest on the top of the mound, and then you'll bury the roots around that mound. If you have any exceptionally long roots that stretch beyond the perimeter of the mound that you've created, you'll want to dig out areas for those roots to be able to lay, or cut them off depending on the health and size of your tree. In our case, because our sand is so loose, we want to use as many existing roots as we can in order to stabilize the tree quickly. If we had a better soil to start with, we would probably chop off the excess roots that we have, allowing them to grow anew and potentially be stronger. Unless a tree specifically requires some other treatment, we will plant the trees so that the crown of the root ball is just barely above the surrounding surface level. Keeping that crown exposed just a little bit makes sure that the base of the tree does not suffer from any rot because of contact to the ground. When mulching after finishing the planting, you'll want to keep this in mind so as not to mulch over that area directly either. You can mulch normally and then simply pull the mulch back from the tree to expose that root ball base. We don't like to add any compost or amendments to the soil itself, but we do add a small amount of compost above the soil so that the plant at least has something to start with. We also firmly press down the area around the newly planted tree in order to get rid of any air pockets. You want to make sure that you press firmly enough to compress the soil, but not so firm that you tear the root ball. We were unable to get footage of our trees when they actually arrived and we unpacked them, but we need to discuss that a little bit. You don't know how long a bare root tree has been out of the ground by the time it reaches you. 
It's entirely possible that it's lost a fair amount of water from its root structure by the time you're ready to plant it. Because of this, it's pretty important that you get the root ball in a bucket of water as quickly as possible, and then give it a little bit of time to soak up whatever it might need to replace whatever was lost. Usually, an hour is sufficient. You can go up to four with no problems. If you know when your trees are going to arrive, prepare the bucket the day before. This will allow any chlorine that's in your water to naturally dissipate before your tree roots are exposed to it. Chlorine's not a huge detriment to plants, but it does help if you can let it out gas before the plants are exposed to it. If you have multiple plants, you can put them all in the same bucket as long as the entire root structure of all the plants is below the water line. We'll talk more about the apple trees in a minute. As part of our order, we also got some nice blackberry canes. While the blackberries are much smaller, the process is exactly the same. You take the bare root plants, position them where you want them, build a small mound underneath them, and then bury the roots around the mounds. Again, we added a little bit of compost and then some mulch to cover them and pulled both away from the stems so that the plants had plenty of room around the base of the plants. We ordered three different thornless varieties of blackberries for this patch. We'll talk more about those in another episode. Pruning is such a huge topic that we'll have to address that in a separate video, but I do want to talk about it just a little bit. The nursery that you bought your plants from should have a specific recommendation of how much to prune off. Most of the time, that's about a third. However, if your nursery recommends something else, follow that. It is important that you do this initial pruning, as it kind of sets the pattern for the tree and its future growth. Pruning is too broad of a topic to cover in just one video. And new trees do not have the structure that you need to give good examples of how to prune in general. We'll talk more about pruning in this coming spring when we prune some of our bigger fruit trees. We planted all of these trees in the beginning of January. It's now been not quite a month. Let's take a look at how they've done. So this is our Dorset Golden about a month after we planted it. And as you can see, it is already working on putting out new buds on some of the areas that we left. We can see that it's branching out quite nicely. So this is going to be a tree in the shape that we want it. If we take a look at the Anna, you can see that those cuts are starting to heal over nicely. We've got some new budding right at the tips where we cut. We have some fresh buds on that one. You can hopefully see that it's actually started putting out new uh, branches out of the side of that original cut. Also encourage some new budding and branching out here. These are the blackberries that we planted. You can see they're still really small, but Hopefully, you can see that they've already started to wake up to generate new growth and sprouts. And they've settled in quite nicely. Uh, we water them fairly regularly and they're doing quite well. We have a couple of really cold nights coming our way, so we will protect these. Uh, just so that they are a little less chance of losing those new buds, uh, even though they should be okay. Uh, but we'd rather be safe than sorry on the new plants. We hope that was helpful. If it was, we'd appreciate it if you'd give us a thumbs up. That lets YouTube know that they should show us to more people. We'll also do a video about why we chose the apple trees we did and why we planted them as closely as they are. If you would like to be notified of that, then consider subscribing and hit the notification bell. Thanks, we'll see you next time.